coming up in this episode, I discuss my decision to opt out of Kindle Unlimited and shifting my focus from book sales to getting more book reviews. Welcome to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Author Diary, an exclusive look at the behind the scenes misadventures of a 30-something mystery author. Discover how close she is to releasing her latest novel, hear exciting details about upcoming writing projects, and discover the lessons she has learned along her writing journey so you don't have to make the same mistakes. You can find the episode show notes and lots more information at authorpreneurpodcast.com forward slash podcast. Hello writers, I hope you are well and are staying safe. In the month of June, I made a decision to opt out of Kindle Unlimited and I don't regret trying it out. Due to this experience, I've learned a few valuable lessons which I will put into practice for another series. While I'm on the topic of lessons learned, I've also changed my focus from sales to getting more book reviews and I share the steps I plan on taking to make this happen. Even though I'm shifting my focus to book reviews, I share the results of the book promotion I've paid for throughout the month. Now on to the writing related news. In preparation for the launch of book two, I've decided to write a new reader magnet for my mailing list. During the month, I outlined a short story in the James Lalonde universe and I made progress on the rewrites for James Lalonde book two and I finally shared the title and the cover over on my blog post with you. On top of all of this, I'm making a special announcement at the end of this episode. So stay tuned for all of that and much more. Just to let you know, this episode was recorded on Tuesday the 20th of October, so this show is primarily me looking back at June. In the same spirit as the previous episode, there is a backlog with this show due to the pandemic situation that we're all facing. After a while, I've managed to figure out how to work from home with my husband and do all of the things I would typically achieve. If you're on YouTube, you'll notice that I've gone back to an audio-only version of the podcast, and that's because of my hair situation and my husband working from home. So I'm sorry that there is no video for this episode. Throughout this episode, I'll be referencing tools and services that I've used. If you're interested in reading the transcript or would like links to anything that I've mentioned in the show, then check out the very long blog post or edited transcript at authorpreneurpodcast.com forward slash BTS033. And if you're new to this podcast, then I want to say a huge thank you for stopping by and trying out my show. To those of you who have been faithfully listening to my show, thank you for regularly listening in and supporting me. Your support means more to me than you know. In the month of June, I was prompted by KDP to renew my enrollment in the KDP Select program and I decided to opt out. I know it's not good to jump in and out of KU, but I've reached the end of my exclusivity period and I decided to reevaluate my options. In terms of advertising, the cost per sale is higher in KU than wide. And for some reason, I stopped getting reads even with free promotions, but this might be pandemic related. And on top of this, I haven't written to genre, and I think this might be an important step to getting the most out of Kindle Unlimited. My book, if I'm completely honest, doesn't completely fit in one particular genre or another, but it's mostly murder mystery. So I think this actually is probably key to being successful in KU as well as having a series and ha- and to have found your target market and to be honest I probably haven't found my readership for missing yet I probably still need to make more steps to finding the right readers for my books As I alluded to in the introduction, from this point on, I'm changing my focus from book sales to book reviews. What I have noticed is it's easier to get ratings on Goodreads than Amazon for me for some reason. So in light of this, I've decided to use a service called Lola's Blog Tours, and she has a service... A company called Lola's Blog Tours and she has a service called Review Opportunities where she helps you find readers to read and leave reviews of your book on Amazon. 
This is actually proving to be a double-edged sword because I'm getting reviews from people who are reading the first edition and I can tell they're reading the first edition because they comment on things that I know I've fixed. And one lady, one particular person who read my book actually spoiled the, the ending on Goodreads and she went and did it on Amazon. There's no way of hiding this review on Amazon, even though it contains a spoiler, but in Goodreads, you can hide it. So you can say this person spoiled the ending of the book and the re review still sits there and it just says this review contains spoilers. So you have the option of opening and closing that review. So if you like spoilers, you can read it. If not, you can just not notice that review. But it's still a part of the review count and it still affects your average review rating for the book. But Amazon doesn't have this feature and it's actually a really good feature and I wish they brought it in for Amazon just to let people know that certain reviews contain spoilers. And I've also started using Booksprout where I'm handing out reader copies for people to read and leave a review on Amazon if they liked it. And I found someone else who really likes my book and is interested in reading the next one and she left a really nice review on Amazon so there are people out there who like my book I just need to find more of them. So even though I'm focusing on getting book reviews I'm still using book promotion services but I'm doing this with the hopes of finding readers who will read my books and leave a review. So the first service I used was Awesome Gang and I only got two sales from this and I think the price for the promotion was so low that I haven't listed it and I'm sorry. And again this was a 99 cent sale it wasn't a free download. I also used Crave Reads and I got one sale that promotion costed me five pounds. I have a funny feeling Awesome Gang was a similar price. And once again, I boosted a Facebook post and I got a lot of likes on Instagram, but no sales, no clicks. I entered that Facebook boosted post quite early once I realized I wasn't getting any clicks. So I'm not really after validation in form of likes. I was hoping to get clicks through to the book on Amazon or the books to read page where they could find the book on sale for 99 cents. This month I also experimented with the promotions in the Kobo promotions tab and I used a free promotion and it was seven days and it costed 30, no it costed three pounds. It was like a huge bargain. So if you're in the US that's like, I think it's, I think it might be just a little over three dollars including taxes. So I ended up getting 83 downloads from the 29th of June to the 30th of June. I'm hoping to get reviews from this on June 29th, I was at, I think it was 2,987th position in the Mystery and Suspense International store. And on the 30th of June, I was at the position 1,955 in the same chart. And there's an image of this on the blog post. I'll keep you updated for July in the next podcast episode, which, which will be BTS 034. I turned Facebook ads back on, but I got no sales. And I said yes to another bargain booksy promotion where I will be publishing wide and that was $50 and it's scheduled for July 16th so I'll keep you posted on what happens with that in the next month. If you've heard something in this episode that was helpful to you and you'd like to support the show, then buy me a coffee for as little as one pound at buymeacoffee.com forward slash author AD Hay. And now for my writing update. I'm actually pretty excited about the amount of writing I managed to get done in June. So I managed to get 24 solid hours of writing spread over eight days. So it obviously wasn't one continuous day because that's not believable. It was 24 hours spread across eight days and they weren't consecutive days either. So there's a photo of my Alice in Wonderland calendar for June where I've added stickers onto the days where I've written and that's available on the blog post for this episode. So those writing days were spread across two particular projects. The first project was The Candidate, which is the James Lelond short mystery short story, and I had completed six days of writing. Because it's a murder mystery, I had to decide which characters would be interviewed by James and the things that they were honest about and the truths they would withhold and the reasons they had for talking to James. Because he's a journalist and he's not a police officer, they're not obliged 
to to talk to him but I've given them valid reasons and understandable reasons for talking to him about their involvement or just to purely share what they know. I've created a timeline for the victim of the crime. I've added scene, more scene blocking notes for every scene in the story. I've added word count targets to the outline spreadsheet and I've realized that technically I'm writing a novelette. I'm going to market the story as a short story because I have a funny feeling a reader won't understand what a novelette is and if I just explain that it's a short story so they will get the story is short and it's not a novel and I'm going to price it accordingly. I've also added a few extra columns to the outline spreadsheet. I've added location, scene titles, and timeline. And the timeline is spread across a few different columns, and it's date, day, and time. And I've done this just so I can keep, just so I can add a sense of realism to the story, and I'm aware that everything's happening in a logical timeline and everything's realistic. And something I've been doing with missing as well is I labeled the scene types in the outline spreadsheet. I've got this from a book called Writing to Market by Chris Fox and I've got a reminder of what these scene types are on my cork board and there's an image of that on my blog. It's the same cork board that I have my mini Alice in Wonderland calendar. After this I rated the scenes according to its intensity and that's, and that's a rating out of 10 and it's more of an emotional intensity. After this, I added notes on scene questions, scene goal. And in terms of scene goal, it's why is this scene in the story? The value shifts, conflict, stakes, and cliffhanger for each scene. And this helps me to revise my outline and pay attention to the story structure. And hopefully it will help me make sure I've answered all of the plot questions. I actually did this with missing, but I'm paying extra attention to this. And I'm going to go through and make sure all the questions that I've raised in the scenes are actually being answered this time. I've added a column for red herrings or misdirection to the outline spreadsheet. This is something that I've done that is new and it's because I'm paying more attention to, I'm paying extra attention to the clues that I'm giving the reader to help the reader solve the mystery alongside James. After this, I got to do the exciting stuff and that was set up the Scrivener file. I know that's super nerdy and that is not in any way exciting, especially if you've used Scrivener, you know it's a bit tedious, but yay, I finally got there. And I imported the scene details into Scrivener in the notes section for every scene. And I've added an extra scene to ensure the story has a satisfying conclusion. After this, I added the scene blocking notes to the interview scenes and I'm officially ready to start writing the first draft of the candidate but I won't do this until I finished revising book two. In the month of June I got two days of writing done on book two and I'm still calling this a productive month because I've got something done and ready to go immediately after I finish revising book two and send it off to beta readers. So I've got something to do while I'm waiting for that and this short story will probably only take four sittings to write and I'm only giving myself two weeks to revise it and I'm obviously going to get this professionally edited as well. I'm excited to announce that I followed through with my plans and I shared the title and the book cover with my email list in two separate author emails this month. So the first one was the title and the second one was the book cover. And I shared the book cover on Instagram and Facebook. The title is Duplicity. If you're curious, come on over to the blog post and check out the cover. A link to the blog post will be made available in the show notes of your favorite podcasting app. I felt quite blocked with writing Duplicity this month. Once again, I'm putting this down to losing interest in rewriting the book and being riddled with writer's insecurity. I made further revisions to the first three chapters of Duplicity with Autocrit and this was purely done because I wanted to share a sample with my email list as well and that sample is now being made available on my website. There is a button and you just download it with BookFunnel. And once again, I used vellum to create the sample for this book. So usually by the time I press publish, there's the sample file, there's the file for the ebook, and I like to create a separate paperback file and a separate large print edition. 
this month, while I was trying to write, rewrite Duplicity, I had a serious, I had a serious tech issue with Excel. It kept crashing and losing my work. And I tried to, to create a copy of my outline in Scrivener, but it didn't quite work out. And I then started using Google Spreadsheets. And Google Spreadsheets doesn't quite work the same way as Excel. And I found that super frustrating. So then I dug a little deeper and I looked at Microsoft Office. So I use Office 365 and it actually stopped updating for a good nine months. So I had to reinstall it and fingers crossed, hopefully I won't have that experience again because I use Office 365. So Excel, Word, not that I use Word and PowerPoint and whatever other things they have with their cloud drive called OneDrive. And yeah, it just, it turns out it just completely stopped stopped updating which is a bit weird but I've managed to figure figure that out so hopefully I won't have those issues again in the future and what really frustrated me was I lost a day's work in Excel when I was working on the candidate I ended up redoing about four hours worth of outlining for the candidate so that was fun over in the show notes in your favorite podcasting app I will leave links to the programs and tools that I've used to write and rewrite for this month and those programs are what I Crit, Vellum, and the book Writing to Market by Chris Fox. I've decided that I want to start using beta readers for the second book in the James Lond series. I don't know why I keep referring it to the second book because, oh, it's because I've recorded three podcast episodes today and I'm all talked out. My husband will be super thrilled by that, but I'm all talked out and I keep referring it to as James Bond book two. I've decided that I want to start using beta readers for Duplicity, which is the second book in the James Bond series. The good news is you don't have to read the first book to understand the events that take place in book two, but you do need to love mystery or whodunit novels to be a beta reader. At the moment, I'm looking for feedback on the plot, if there is any place in the story where you're either lost or bored and who you think committed the murder and how you feel about the ending. As of today, there are 27 chapters available to read out of a possible 53. The chapters are uploaded daily onto the beta reading software. Each chapter has been revised by me and line edited using two types of online software. So I'll be using ProWriting Aid and Grammarly to do the line edits and then uploading it, but it has not been professionally edited. If you love mystery or whodunit novels and are interested in becoming a beta reader and providing feedback, then fill out the online form at authoradhay.com forward slash beta hyphen reader and I'll send you an invitation to read Duplicity on the software. And I'll talk about this new software that I'm using in an upcoming episode of the podcast. I think it'll be September, the September episode, so it'll be in three episodes time, I think. Yeah, I started using it in September. So that's all of the tasks I completed in terms of writing, book marketing and email marketing. During the next month, I want to direct my focus back to rewriting book two and working through my writing insecurities. The next episode will be another author diary update where I will continue to discuss my writing and book marketing endeavors. If you have any questions or have tips on book marketing that you would love to share with me, please come over to the blog post at authorpreneurpodcast.com forward slash bts033 and share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you for listening and happy reading and writing everybody. Thank you for listening to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Author Diary. You can find the episode show notes, back catalogue episodes and lots more information at authorpreneurpodcast.com forward slash podcast. I'm your host Amelia and I'll see you in the next Behind the Scenes Author Diary episode.